Be Matthew McGrath. I am, uh, because all these amendments are related. Thank you. Let's go, let's go here, look. And um, we are raising this amendment because, as I said, you know, in the lifetime and the period of the number of amendments and under this, you know, 10-year um, strategy now to, that we won't have a, a, an opportunity to discuss these again, uh, you're up to, and, and these are not our figures, but international figures, that somewhere between 3,000 and 9,000 uh, euros will be paid by each member of society in this carbon tax. And I think that is an awful lot of money, especially in the middle of a, of a, of a, a pandemic. And in any case, without any proper fair or analysis of um, the impact this is having. And with the giant up thinking, some people, and, and you know, we'll be taught in there's uh, different carbon initiatives and there's different uh, schemes and different uh, advantages. Where are they for rural Ireland? They're not there. Take the SEI uh, scheme, which is for warmer homes. There's a two year waiting list now. It's, it's a shocking indictment and so frustrating for people. And the Tipperary Energy Agency, which is in my own hometown of Cardoniski, it's, it's a wonderful place, the great work, but they're just, you know, and the companies out there, and they've been in touch with me different times over the last number of years because they can't get paid and they have their works carried out and for people's homes and to try and have energy uh, uh, savings and have some bit of comfort and solace for people living in rural areas and urban areas. This scheme covers the whole country. And, uh, you know, then they are, will you raise this issue and then they oh, we can't. If we say anything, we'll lose the contracts. So they've been held and they're carrying on credit for work that they have done two years in, 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 previously. But there's a two-year waiting list and it has grown and grown and grown incrementally. And while that's going on, there's no, um, there's absolutely no, no, there's no, um, real, it's just a fake scheme because the money's not, not in it. And people want to embrace uh, the, the climate action and climate change and want to uh, retrofit their homes. But they're just bogged down in bureaucracy. And at the end of the day, then, uh, when they go through the process of assessment, and no assessments are taking place now during COVID. So we're adding another you know, seven, eight months on top of it. And no work is, some assessment may be taking place, but no work is being carried out. I had even one case where the family offered to vacate the home in order to have the retrofitting take place, and they were told um, no, couldn't be, they still wouldn't get it done. There's no money in the bank to pay it, it's as simple as that. So we're taking people's money uh, under false pretenses with no proper analysis or indeed impact assessment of the damage that this is doing to, to our, our people and, and the ability to live. And indeed, are we going to be successful in, in our carbon strategy? So I, this amendment, I'm not, uh, we're, we're, we're pushing this amendment because it's related to a number of amendments that we have down and obviously we're not going to get to those amendments. So we are very concerned about, you know, the bland, uh, sweeping uh, action of this budget, this uh, finance bill and the budget 2021 and that we won't have a chance to discuss this again. And we already, as I said earlier, last can call it, with the 2040 plan, which is destroying rural Ireland, just laying it waste. And now we have, with our country development plan being, being re, re discussed at the moment, we have a new agency that's going to overrule if councils decide one of the only powers they have is to make uh, the, the, the function to make the, the country development plan, can be overruled by the, by the department and by, by another a new quango that's been set up. So it's the hell of the conduct for the people. And I'm saying here, neither, not the hell, not the conduct. We need to live. We need to be able to get to work and back from work. And we need to have services and transport, uh, meaningful schemes, not all announcements for Lewis and Dats and everything else. Nothing against the people of Dublin. They need them. But we need Deputy a Mugart, fair, we need a fair just, amount of come. Could I just hold you for a minute? You won't lose any time. I'll stop. Okay. 320. Okay. Just, just, I just want to clarify for members for a minute that we're dealing not just with 72, 72, 73, 75, 77, inclusive, and 83 and 84, all related, all being discussed at this point. And the following one, 73, is a physical alternative to 72. So just to point that out for the speakers that are coming. Sorry, Deputy McGrath, now you can continue. Thank you. Pardon. Thanks for the clarification, and that's why I'm saying that the minister earlier was saying that I was, uh, wasn't speaking to the amendment. I'm speaking to this whole set of amendments, and you have named read them out there, because they're all in rural independents who put them down are just hugely concerned and hugely united that just we have tokenism and we have uh, pious platitudes and we have all kinds of promises when it comes to you know return bank for our book, return for the monies that have been levied and are going to be levied from families from men, women and children and, and all over the country and the monies that have been levied to, to, uh, heretofore 
We've got nothing in so we're not nothing, but we've got supports for you know, some greenways and some projects. As I mentioned in earlier, we have a blue way in, Tip in South Tipperary, and we need to have a wonderful greenway in, in Port Laurigan and Dun Dungarvan. And we have, it's like, but the county council have been left hugely indebted, county council, for, for having the foresight and pushing forward with those projects. And I want to salute the, the community groups. And as I mentioned, Knockville Down Active, and I mentioned, you know, uh, different community groups that are doing their best on a daily basis to, 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 to um, promote all uh, tourism products and promote a greener economy uh, by so doing for, with walks and with everything else and, you know, and mountain walks and hill walks and everything else. And it's hugely been taken up. And the people from the cities that I talk about are coming to walk. But we need to have support then when they pay this in our fill of diesel, when we pay it in our home heating oil, when we pay it in our bag of coal, our briquettes or heat logs or whatever. We need the support and we're not getting it. And I'm crying foul here, extremely foul, that we're doing this for a nine-year period here and won't have a chance to debate it in next year's budget or bill. So all we want is fair play. Fair play is fine play with me any day. But as long as we had fair play with the people of rural land, and I'm mean, you consider the two last count caller, I mean, the services haven't there. I hear you all the time talking about a, a, a ring road for Galway. We need a ring road for Tipperary Town, where the people can live. And like we we'll pay all the taxes, but we don't get the returns. And you know, I mean, the lorries choked up in, in, in that town, one of the last towns we bypassed now, it's certainly in Tipperary, and lorries parked up uh, and polluting the air for the you know, hours on end trying to get through. Business people can't do business. Motorists won't drive into the town because they'll go someplace else that they can park outside the town, which is a policy and a strategy that was there as well. So, look, I'm, we're, we're pushing uh, this amendment. Thank you. Thank you.